So terrific. Um, as, as you all know, uh, Tony Blair doesn't often overreach. Um, but on this occasion, he's probably done that because he called me up and he said, um, I want you to come and talk at the meeting and explain how you're going to fix the NHS. <laughs> and you have 10 minutes. <laughs> so put your seatbelts on. Here we go. Um, technology is going to underpin everything we do to actually make the NHS function again. And historically, that's absolutely what's happened with the great advances in healthcare that we've seen since 1960. And those achievements have been really quite dramatic uh, and have been entirely driven, or largely driven, by new innovations that have come in a whole range of different diseases and have had a major impact on morbidity and mortality. So cardiovascular mortality is down 70% over that time frame. We've got lots of therapies for viral infections. We've got vaccines for childhood infections. The COVID vaccine got us out of the pandemic. We're increasingly curing cancers with immune therapies. We've got a lot of drugs for inflammatory diseases, which used to be untreatable. We've also got the first signs of drugs for dementia and obesity. Lots of new imaging technologies. We've sequenced the genome literally millions of times. But the punchline on this is that globally, we've extended life expectancy by 19 years since, uh, since 1960. And in the UK, in the last 30 years, we've extended it by 12 years. That's an achievement which I think probably challenges any er other area of human endeavor. It's quite a remarkable achievement. And that's all been driven by technology, largely coming from the digital, uh, uh, digital tech and from pharmaceutical science. But we've got to go further than that, because at the moment, all those advances have been taking place within a particular type of a healthcare setting, and that is treating people when they present with late-stage disease, with acute episodes of care, often, often in a hospital setting. And that whole model of late-stage acute episodes of care is the one that's actually taken us quite a long way down this road, but it's also very expensive. And it's created a large population of, fra of fragile elderly pop uh, patients, which is putting huge stress on the healthcare system. And it's the reason we spend 10% of our healthcare expenditure uh, in the last year of life. So this will not give you a solution to healthcare over the long term. That's only gonna come if we cure diseases or prevent diseases. And this model doesn't do either. So we need to think about how we're gonna make that work. So the current healthcare system, it's encumbered by shifting demography, it's encumbered by the population health burdens from the big uh, chronic diseases which are disabling most of the elderly population. We only treat late stage disease, symptomatic disease, which is at the end of its natural history. It's a sort of 1950s model of healthcare. It, this has largely been done in the absence of any digital infrastructure and it's also been associated with a failure to adopt that digital technology to increase productivity of the workforce. It's not due to lack of money. This is a chart of, from the King's Fund paper on OECD data, that 12.8 is the number for the UK. You can see that in some years, we're second only to the US in terms of the amount of money we throw at our healthcare system, and we're always in the top third. So the idea that we don't have enough money in the healthcare system is incorrect. And for that large amount of money, we've actually got a relatively catastrophic set of outcomes. This is avoidable mortality rates. And you can see we're right, well, we're actually not, thank goodness for the USA, because they're always the worst at all this stuff. But just to be clear, we're the second worst. So, you know, we, uh, there's a bit of work to do here for sure. And one of the reasons is that the NHS is really become a technology-averse healthcare system. It's really almost bulletproof against new technology. If you look at the amount of money we spend on drugs, particularly new drugs, it's much lower than most of our peers. And if you look at our access to technology like CT scans and MRI scanners, again, we're the little box right at the right. We just don't do it. And, and as a result, the system is really disabled because we haven't taken up the innovative options. But I think the worst aspect of this is the fact that we failed to take on board digital technology, make use of healthcare data, 
to actually understand what causes the disease, but also identify who can most benefit from interventions. And the fact that our tech funding fell to less than a billion pounds this year out of a total budget of 180 billion is, I think, pretty outrageous, actually. And without fixing that, we're not going to fix the healthcare system. So can you shift the paradigm? You can. And the reason is that does all these diseases start much earlier than their symptoms, so you can shift the paradigm far to the left. You can do prevention in many diseases, and it's been very successful in cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and other diseases. You can do early diagnostics now, and you can introduce therapies much earlier to try and blunt the morbidity curve. And that means changing to a new model of care, which has moved much earlier in disease natural history. So we need to start young. We know that most of these diseases start in late teens and early 20s. We need to predict who's at risk of which diseases. We need to screen them early, diagnose their diseases early, and flatten their um, uh, morbidity and mortality curve by intervening early. And that can be achieved because of new technology. And technology has really, this is technology that's all arrived in the last 10 years. We can predict risk better using genetics, using a variety of other protein markers, but particularly using digital data and technology to identify which diseases are you likely to suffer from so that we can target our attentions. We can diagnose those diseases early, circulating tumor and DNA has had a lot of press recently, but new techniques in imaging, again, blood proteins can tell you whether people have got early disease long before they're symptomatic, so you can intervene at an early stage. And we know that that early intervention really has an impact. So there's really exciting data in cancer that if you use the new immune therapies at early stages of cancer, you can essentially get to cure. So prevention and cure is going to be the way that we have to move the entire healthcare system. So we need to know two things. A, what does it look like? We need a structure which is community-based to deliver this. Hospitals and GP surgeries won't do it. It needs to be digitally enhanced. But many of these things can be delivered to people who move in and out of essentially what is a local community-based structure. We've called this one shot. It's infrastructure light. And interestingly, it has a very limited requirement of doctors, which is also one of the problems with the current system. Um, and we've already tried to model this. This is a really exciting project, which has come out of our life sciences strategy, which John Simons and I have been leading. This is a, to try and see whether this model of healthcare will actually have the impact we think. It's a cohort of five million volunteers who are signing up across the UK. We do a health check on them, find out what they're at risk of. We can do genetics and evaluate them. Then we feed information back. We help them with prevention. We help them with early diagnosis, and hopefully, will give them a really good chance of getting on their diseases early. We've already had 640,000 volunteers in seven months, and this is the recruitment of this. This is the now in, uh, going to be the largest uh, health research project on the planet. It's hugely digitally enabled. Each one of those dots is a new person signing up. You better get going if you haven't signed up quickly because there are not going to be any slots left. So this is a really exciting way to model how a new healthcare system is going to work. Prevention and cure has to be the focus. Thanks very much.